irregardless and its 14 friends words that are but shouldn't be regardless of what you think irregardless is a real word there are some words that the more grammar conscious purist prescriptivists cringe at hearing there are some words that exist that really shouldn't and also there are some words that we think exist that don't this list is 15 words that will make you burn your dictionaries alive Number one, irregardless. So why does irregardless get so much flack? Hell, it even gets the red line when I type it into Microsoft Word. Well, the simple reason is regardless means without regard. The less adds the negation. So of course, adding another layer of negation with ir just sounds stupid. The opposite of reverent is irreverent. Now, if you used the word reverentless, while it's not in a dictionary, I could accept the word with the knowledge of your intention but irreverentless would just be unpardonable. However, irregardless is not quite in the same boat as irreverentless, because irregardless is a real word. It is cited in some dictionaries as a non-standard form of regardless, but irregardless is still a word. The problem is, we have not been using it correctly. The seemingly excessive ir that is added to regardless is actually meant to add emphasis to the less, and create yet a higher level of negation, one of finality. So the less and the ear don't cancel out. Instead, they are stacked, added, compounded to give a more resolute force. Irregardless should actually be used as a statement of finality that shuts down all opposition. So irregardless actually means regardless of anything. I can go to work regardless of the rain, but if I'm going to work irregardless, then even if there's a firestorm or the Armageddon, I am going to work. If I say, irregardless, I'm leaving, it means there's absolutely nothing that you can do to change my mind. Anyway, let's all agree to never use this word again. I promise, none of the other words on this list will take that long. If I have some chicken in the freezer that I need to cook, I might need to get it thawed. But what if I want to unthaw it? Stupidly, unthaw, despite the prefix that denotes opposite or undoing, is a synonym of thaw. A synonym. Not only that, but dethaw is also there. Dethaw. Technically, these words should mean to freeze. I should be able to say, please unthaw some water, as a synonymous sentence to please make some ice. <laughs> Next up is a clown well decked in a trench coat, top hat and fancy cane, pre-plan. The redundancy is frustrating and this word is becoming more and more popular. You can't post-plan, planning is done before something, pre-plan is like saying pre-prepare. Now there's a context in which this word could be acceptable. If you're actually planning before the real planning, then fine, I'll accept it. But even in that case, preliminary planning is much less awkward. Now this is one I have fallen prey to, admittedly. Fancying up essays can lead to some real sins, like using the word firstly, or secondly, or thirdly. These words do absolutely nothing that first, second, and third don't do. While they do sound fancier, the former words really have no lexical feet to stand on. First is as much an adverb as it is an adjective. First like this video, second subscribe, third leave a comment. This next word is another one with useless extra letters, orientate. It is a real word that means the same as the less commonly used orient. If you turn something to face the right direction, then you have oriented it. I think this word fell into existence because eight is such a common suffix that turns nouns into verbs, causing madmen to say conversate instead of converse. If you are already overwhelmed, then you are wrong. What you need to be is whelmed. To be whelmed is to be overcome by or submerged in something. Over is just overkill. It needs to stop. Reiterate is another word I use quite often that I shouldn't. The re is totally unnecessary because iterate or to create an iteration is to repeat. So reiterating is basically re-repeating. 
Iterate is now mainly used in computing and math, while the excessive reiterate continues to whelm everyday conversation. If I confess to something, then I admit to it with regret and apology. It's a disclosure that takes place not because I am found out, but because I am willing and decide to open up. No one can confess for me, and I can't confess for anyone else. That being said, a self-confession is superfluous in blasphemous proportions. Now this one is technically an okay word, but it still needs to go. Inflammable. If something can easily burst forth into flames, then it is flammable. You would then think that something that is inflammable would not so easily burst into flames. But the word you would be looking for is non-flammable. Inflammable is technically correct because the in isn't really a prefix. Instead, inflammable is inflame plus able, meaning something that can easily become inflamed. However, since both words sort of serve the same purpose, barring a few vague distinctions that we can do without, there is need for inflammable, the more duplicitous of the two, to be set ablaze and permanently retired. This one is very annoying, thankfully I don't hear it too often. Participator. The meaning is obvious, one who participates. The problem is, participant is a perfectly good word that serves that precise function. I stay away from baking shows because at any given time, someone may try to preheat an oven. Are they trying to heat it before they heat it? Even the awkward for heat exists. I think all you really need to do is to heat the oven. Even though the pre suggests in preparation for something, it is still unnecessary. Unlike preheat, words like pre-cooked or pre-seasoned make sense because something can be cooked before you actually cook it. Cook in the second case meaning to make it into a meal. If it is pre-seasoned, then it is seasoned before it is packaged and sold to you. Or it is seasoned before you season it with whatever seasonings you want to use. But preheat has got to go. Just like the last one, this word came into existence to make people sound intelligent. Pre-board. This is the flight attendant's version of the baker's preheat. You cannot board a plane before you board it. This term is used to talk about boarding some passengers before or pre other passengers. So in pre-boarding, wheelchaired persons, for example, will go on. But all they need to say is such and such people will be boarded first. Pre-board suggests something that happens before boarding. For example, fueling a plane could be considered a pre-boarding activity. And we always hope that it is. Number 13 is pre-record, because record cannot be anything but pre. If you're watching a pre-recorded show, you're really just watching a recorded show, plain and simple. Now this one is absolutely horrendous, forewarn. Warning has to be for, it has to be before the thing happens, otherwise it wouldn't be much of a warning, it would be more of an I told you so. Every warning happens in advance, and so this word is pointless. Forewarn should actually mean to warn before you warn. At number 15, we have a double entry in intermingle and commingle. The redundancy is clear. Mingling is already co or inter. It has to be between or among two or more things, so neither of these words makes sense. Please do not use them or any other word on this list. And there we have it, 50 words that are but shouldn't be. Thanks for watching.